And girls, settle down, stop throwing paper darts. Thank you for joining me today where people continue to be wrong on the interwebs. They continue to be recidivist offenders. They continue to be salad boy who wants to push a dangerous contraindicated diet, including the pouring of hundreds of grams of unnecessary and in fact contraindicated carbohydrates down one's ridiculous neck every single day of one's life. And he wants to claim that there are no hidden dangers in so doing. Okay, Paul. Righto. Anyway, let's deal with Paul's argument on its own merits or lack thereof that he's made recently in a video. Responding, it seems, to a video put together by Dr. Ken Berry with some help from myself, including finding out some very interesting facts around uh, hemoglobin A1C testing, etc., and its relative insensitivity to fructose and galactose and uh, suggesting that that might be a reason to be relatively concerned about the intake of particularly large amounts of fructose, which you'll find in fruit and honey, don't you, Paul? Uh, anyway, Paul wants to continue to um, justify his addiction to carbohydrates, and he wants to push his ideas as being safe and effective for others, despite them not having the situation that he has in terms of his activity levels, etc. So anyway, let's deal with Paul and see what he has to say and put him right where he's wrong. And boys and girls, just a spoiler, that's everywhere. Off you go, Paul. There's been a bit of discussion recently online about potential hidden dangers of fruit and honey. Yes. So um, I received a message a couple of weeks ago from Dr. Ken Berry saying, listen, can you look into the potential insensitivity of the hemoglobin A1C test to picking up uh, fructose and galactose, is it quite specific for glucose-mediated glycation of the red cells? I did a bit of research, found out that yes, yes, it is very sensitive and it doesn't pick up uh, fructose or galactose as well as it picks up glucose remotely. And as such, you might be consuming a diet with a relatively high amount of fructose in it, Paul, for example, and your A1C would come back within the normal range, but that would not be able to detect, perhaps, the damage to your body being done by the fructose at large, Paul. Uh, anyway, let's, let's talk more about the actual science. Uh, that's, this is where it gets fun. I saw a few comments on YouTube, and I wanted to do a video in response to this. As many of you know, I'm a huge advocate for including fruit and honey in the human diet. And that's why you should remain silent about diet for human beings, Paul, for all time. Because the exact amount of required carbohydrates in human beings is not one single gram ever. And about the worst possible exogenous carbohydrate you can pour down your neck is fructose. We'll get to that a bit later, though. Basically, criminal misanthropy from you, Paul. Trying to justify an addiction to a contraindicated substance is all you're doing here. It's disgraceful. It's not the coming of a physician, Paul, at all. Okay? Stop it. And in this video, I'm going to show you why hemoglobin A1C does actually measure fructose glycations. You're not going to show any such thing at all, in fact, Paul. Just a spoiler for the boys and girls. He's about to attempt to show that, and he's going to fall flat on his stupid face again because Paul Saladino is not trained in science, does not know how to read a science paper, and cannot critically assess what he's reading. And he's going to make just about every schoolboy error in the book on on looking at a couple of papers here, and we'll get to that in a minute when I stop talking so much. When you feed mammals excess fructose, you see a rise in both hemoglobin A1C and fructose. Yes, but not commensurate with the intake of such sugars. So there are no hidden dangers here. Yes, there are. The, the danger is still the same, Paul. It's that the A1C test is not sensitive to fructose or galactose. If there is a danger to fructose in whole food form, fruit and honey, which is what's being discussed here. That's not food still. We would see it in the hemoglobin A1C. And we do. No, you don't because the A1C is not sensitive to it, Paul. That's the whole point. 
not see that. So let me show you a study done in rats that clearly shows. No, it doesn't. That there is no hidden danger. It shows no such thing, Paul. Not at all. Fructose, because you will see all of the glycation reflected in the hemoglobin A1C. And false. The study that you're about to show, Paul, does not show that whatsoever. So here's the study that I want to note. The title is Long-Term Fructose Consumption Accelerates Glycation and Several Age-Related Variables in Male Rats. The point of me showing you this is to prove that if the levels of fructose in your blood go up with consumption, you will see this reflected in your hemoglobin A1C and your fructosamine. So if you look here in table one for this paper, you will see these rats, they are fed 250 grams per liter solutions of fructose, glucose, or sucrose for one year. And you can see here is the water-fed group, the glucose-fed group, the sucrose-fed group. So that's a disaccharide of glucose and fructose, and the fructose-fed group. Notably, the blood glucose levels for all of the intervention arms of this trial, glucose, sucrose, and fructose, are all pretty similar, which yep. is going to be important when we're looking at the hemoglobin A1C level and the fructosamine level. You can see the blood fructose levels here. Not surprisingly, the glucose-fed group has a low level of blood fructose. The sucrose-fed group has a slightly higher level, not 100x or anything like that. And the fructose-fed group, pure fructose-fed group, has a higher level of fructose in their blood. Goodness me. Really. Higher levels of fructose in the blood when the rats are uh, allowed ad libitum to drink a solution containing fructose. What a shock. What's your point? If you look at... We'll look at the actual statistics in a minute, by the way. The fructosamine assay you see very clearly that the fructose-fed group sees a rise in the fructosamine assay. False. Paul, incompetent assessment of the statistics provided to you in this table. False. Similarly to the hemoglobin A1C. So this column right here. Again, false. Right, well, let's have a look at these statistics, shall we, and put this argument to bed. What Paul indicated was that the fructose level in the blood was clearly elevated versus the, um, the glucose situation, shall we say. All right. What we're looking at here is it says 2.63 plus or minus 0 0.15. Now, what does that plus or minus mean? That plus or minus gives us an indication of the variability of the individual rats concerned in this study, n equals 10, by the way, in each group, 10. Um, and it shows the variability of the, each of the individual responses of each of those 10 rats as a, a, a guide to the noise around the signal, the mean value for all 10 rats in that group or each of those two groups, if you like. All right. The figures given are plus or minus the standard deviation. Okay, so what you get is um, the ability to say, right, how far around that mean value do these data points spread? Okay, and for a 95% of the data points, you need to take two, or 1.96 standard deviations either side of the mean value. And then if you want to assert that two group means are meaningfully clinically different, different, different from one another, you would need to take that 1.96, call it two if you want to, and multiply that by two to get four standard deviations of difference to say, yeah, these are, these are clearly very, very different results. So shall we do that for fun? All right. So we have 2.63 plus or minus 0 0.3, which would give us 
2.33 would be the lower bound of 95% confidence on the fructose. 2.33. The one that's been compared to is the 1.48, plus or minus 0.24. 1.6, So there is a separation there, and that's no surprise, given that the glucose group are not being fed fructose, then they were not being allowed to drink fructose ad libitum, and the fructose group are not being allowed to do that. So fine. No surprises there. Okay. The fructosamine assay that um, measures the uh, glycation of the albumin suggests to us that we have 0 0.24 plus or minus 0 0.18 which would give us 1.06 lower bound versus glucose 0 0.93 plus or minus 0 0.12, 1.15, isn't it? Whoopsie daisy. Signal to noise ratio. Okay. Um, now, the reason I'm talking about that four standard deviations, by the way, is for 90 or power of 0.95, which, you know, you really need power of about 0.95 with a sample size as small as n equals 10 to be remotely taken seriously by a decent scientist. So that's why I'm using those numbers in case anyone was confused as to why. That's why. All right. So the fructosamine signal to noise ratio suggests actually that. While the fructose group did have a higher um, glucose level in their plasma, there was not necessarily a meaningful difference in the glycation of albumin. Isn't that interesting? So there goes that argument a bit. Now if we look at the blood hemoglobin level, we have 3.27 plus or minus 0.47, so we have 2.6 at the lower bound. And if we look at the glucose, we have 2.59, plus or minus 0.4 something. Signal to noise ratio, we do not, we do not see either in, increased um, glycation of the albumin meaningfully in a clinical sense, in the fructose group, neither do we see a meaningful change in the hemoglobin A1C reading, exactly what we would expect to not see, precisely because of the insensitivity that we're talking about. Whoopsie daisy, Paul, you've interpreted that completely wrong because you're incompetent to read science. You've read a paper that says, look, there's a statistical difference here, and you've taken that to mean that it's, it's clinically meaningful or useful in any way. You've also made the mistake of assuming that rats are humans, and humans are rats. They're not, Paul. Okay? So we're done with that bit. This study does not show what you're suggesting that it shows. Not remotely. Not at all. Sorry about that. Okay, let's get back to uh, what you're saying about stuff and things, though, shall we? In mammals, if the levels of fructose in your blood rise to any significant degree, your levels of both fructosamine and hemoglobin A1C will reflect that. There is no hidden danger to fructose. I'm not saying yeah, there still is. So should we, let's just pop back to that paper again for a moment. I know we've just spent some time there, but let's go back there because that comment was just so incredible, by which I mean lacking in credibility, Paul, uh, of any kind. All right, discussion. The purpose of the study was to investigate the consequences of long-term fructose consumption compared with glucose or sucrose on glycation, lipid peroxidation, and aging. Good. We measured the levels of fructosamine and HbA1c as indices of glycation, 
because previous in vitro studies clearly showed that fructose is a more potent glycating agent than glucose, okay, and is as much as tenfold more efficient at forming AGE, we hypothesized that chronic fructose intake may adversely affect aging in vivo in rats. Fructose consumption increased blood fructosamine and GHB, A1C that means, that means statistically poor, but not meaningfully as I've just discussed. Urine lipid peroxidation excretion, skin collagen cross-linking, collagen bound fluorescence in cortical bones, and decreased skin collagen solubility. Thus we suggest that fructose compared with glucose or sucrose accelerates the normal aging uh, process, Paul. Perhaps. Mm. All right. Glycated hemoglobin and fructosamine are amidori products. The first stable sugar protein glycated adducts formed by glucose and in practice, their yeah, determination is now accepted and used as a means of monitoring the long-term control of blood glucose. Unlike glycated hemoglobin, which reflects the average blood glucose levels over the past 60 days, the measurement of glycated albumin or glycated proteins, commonly referred to as the fructosamine assay, reflects the average blood glucose concentration over the past 20 days. Fine. Both variables were elevated in rats fed fructose, table one, statistically, is what that means, and may, is that word? May indicate higher circulating glucose in these rats. See how they said that? The elevated um, A1C may indicate elevated glucose. It actually doesn't because the signal to noise ratio means that it doesn't show any such thing, but there you go. All right. Although no differences in fasting blood glucose levels were observed, our data suggests that higher postprandial blood glucose levels in fructose fed rats cannot be ruled out. Furthermore, higher glycated hemoglobin and fructosamine levels failed to reflect the 77% increase in fasting blood fructose levels. These data indicate that neither assay can accurately detect in vivo fructation, Paul. These assays were developed for the detection of glucose amidori products, ketones, of hemoglobin and albumin whereas fructose amidori products are aldehydes and would be expected to react differently. Paul, there it is in black and white from someone, these scientists, who actually understand the assays, unlike you. So you've misrepresented the statistics in this paper completely, um, incompetently, in a disgraceful and misanthropic fashion to suit your ideology, and your addiction to sugar, and you've ignored or not even read this paper where these authors explain to you in clear, unambiguous terms that both the assays involved here are specific for glucose glycation. Wow.